Well, one of our biggest successes for Fright Fest is definitely going to be Grabbers, um, a monster movie directed by our guest here, John Wright. Um, I was on the set, I had a great time on it, so let's find out exactly from John uh, why he wanted to do it. I mean, it literally, it was from the same company who did Tormented. Yeah. So what was in this script that you particularly liked about it? Um, I, I thought the concept was... I hadn't seen it before. Mm. It's one of those things where you scratch your head because it's in hindsight you think it's kind of obvious, like all the best core ideas. So I, you know, wrap my brains and ask people that I knew with encyclopedic knowledge of other movies whether this idea had been done before and I didn't think it had. And then beyond that it was the execution of the script. I thought it was the characters were brilliantly drawn and very warm and kind of um, engaging and it was just very well written and, and great fun. Well, in brief, this, give us a, sort of an idea of the story. Um, so there's a small Irish island off the coast of Ireland, so a bit Father Ted-esque, and it's invaded by 30-foot-high, blood-sucking, tentacled beasties from out of space. And the local town drunk is spat out by one of the grabbers. He, he survives an attack. And uh, they figure out that the reason he survived is because he had alcohol in his bloodstream and the monsters are allergic to it. So the, the conclusion they come to is they need to have a lock-in. And everybody, bar one, gets very, very drunk and they, they battle alien, blood-sucking tentacle monsters whilst drunk. Mm. And when you looked at the script, though, did you worry that you might not be able to get the monsters... You know, they look fantastic in the finished film, they really do. But were you worried that the budget might not be able to achieve that in some way? Yeah, I think that was one of many worries on that score, you know, because we went in to, to make a... A quite a, a big film and a, a kind of epic film on a, on a small budget. Um, but I had a fantastic visual effects company, Invisible, headed up by Paddy Eason, who's a, a friend of mine, somebody I trust, and he... He's, on the, new, he's on the new Bond movie, Skyfall, so that was... Well, he's on many, many big movies, yeah. And so he, he loved the idea and the script and really wanted to do it and, and basically uh, got into it as a kind of passion project, you know, as a labour of love. Mm. And that the company put their all into it, but they they saw it as a calling card, you know, very much in the way that District Nine was a calling card for the company that did that. If you see an effect in Grabbers, uh, Invisible, the company that's Invisible with an N, mm. are, the, are the company responsible. So if you like it or loathe it, they're the ones to to blame. Which isn't always the case on movies nowadays. It tends to be, you know, six, seven, eight, nine companies all credited at the end of the movie, and you know, you have no idea who did what shot. Mm. So you don't know who to point the finger of blame or who to lavish, you know, praise onto. Mm. Now, it stars Richard Coyle, yeah. who's one of my actually all-time favourite actors. I just adore him. I mean, everything he does is really brilliant. And he's great in this. Like, one of the funniest things that happened was he actually sort of like, would only be interviewed, I remember, in character. He never really? lost the Irish accent. <laughs> he, said, he said if he actually does it in his own voice, he'd actually forget how to do the accent. So that was an unusual one. Yeah, he kept it the whole time. and He, he was deep in character. Uh, to the point where I really like Richard as Richard. He's very, you know, laid back and charming and gentle. But when he was Kieran O'Shea, the, the kind of alcoholic garda cop, mm. he was he's not as easy, you know, he's, he's quite, I find him quite frightening. <laughs> he's very alpha, mm. you know, and he's, he's quite unpredictable when he's O'Shea. Mm. So yeah, he, he, yeah, he transformed. <laughs> And you've got Russell Tovey in there as, yeah. like, as like the lab tech, you know, the person who's supposed to explain everything, really. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Exposition. <laughs> yeah, he's that classic kind of the archetypal kind of eccentric scientist. Sure. And he's as the only English character in the film, he's the sort of most annoying character as well, mm. which is all very intended. Because when I was on the set, it was that night where he actually, yeah. do you remember when the, the monster was pulling him up, you know, it's in yeah. fact almost his death scene really, wasn't it? I mean, you know, so, yeah, yeah. And it was really interesting, you know, just being pulled up in like harnesses. And then fair, yeah, fair play to him as well, because he was very game for, for doing that. And he, yeah, they fought, kind of fired him off on a spring-loaded harness. And sure. Yeah, he, but he really enjoyed it, so it was like a, a fairground ride. Yeah. I mean, it, it sort of like goes back to those Day of the Triffids type of movies, doesn't it? We haven't seen yeah. something like that. For a while. I mean, Kim Newman in his review of it called it like, do you remember those Island of Terrors and Night of the Big Heats? It's of course it, back to those movies. I mean, do you see it as that? Yeah, it's it's paying a. I mean, really, I wouldn't go back that far. I think it's, it's paying kind of a loving homage to films like Jaws and, and Gremlins and Tremors and mm. a kind of, I suppose, you know, 
mid 70s to mid 80s type of monster movie where there's a slow burn and they take time to get the character to, to allow you to get to know the characters but also that there's this kind of it's always on, a, on the playful side and it's it has a has a it tends to the fun side and tends not to be dark and disturbing so I think it's kind of a contrast to some of the other movies you're going to have at Fright Fest mm. in that it's it's a, more of a roller coaster ride and, a, and the sense of play is never lost. Mm. How do you describe it? Is it like a science fiction horror comedy? Is it a comedy science fiction horror? I what mean, is it? I mean, for me, it's, it's a monster movie, but it's masquerading as a romantic comedy. Or maybe it's a romantic comedy masquerading as a, <laughs> as a monster movie. It's, it, it's somewhere on that axis. It's also kind of, you know, people are likening it to the guard. So a lot of people are doing yes. this when they do the kind of analogy, they say it's alien meets the guard. Mm. Which is fine, I'll take that. But it's um, in that it's got that kind of quirky Irish, authentically Irish sense of humour. You know, it's got that sort of that mm. sense, of that twinkle in its eye. So it's that kind of a character comedy. But I don't know. I think ultimately, you know, again, looking back to those monster movies that, that inspired it, um, they they were monster movies, but they had other things. You know, mm. they had a, they had other. Yes, because the central romance is very good in this, isn't it? I mean, mm. you've got Richard, who's like who's like when a drunk is trying to stop being one, then you've got yes. Ruth who's actually trying, who yes. is, isn't completely teetotal. Exactly. She actually sort of wants, starts drinking because she has to because of the alien threat. Yeah, so you've got two um, addicts, you know, you've got an alcoholic and a workaholic who come together and kind of learn something from each other. So he learns that he needs to sober up and she learns that she needs to loosen up. Um, and I, th I, I personally think of drunk performances, you know, second to none. Yeah, the last time at the time I remember how acting drunk is, and I one point because that's how because didn't you go out drunk? Yes, I remember. Suddenly remember this story. Yes. you all got really drunk one night to see how it would actually be. We did, yeah. We did a we, we did a rehearsal drunk, which I've never done before. So we um, we basically did a tour. We did a kind of whistle stop tour of all the, the the great pubs in Belfast, and then we ended up at, back at Rich's hotel room. I mean, we had a lot to drink, a lot, way too much intentionally. And drunk all kinds of different drinks, lots of things you probably shouldn't drink. And uh, then we rehearsed, you know, so I had a video camera and, mm. um, and I was just as drunk as they were. And they did scenes from the movie, so they did the scene in the Jeep and they did, you know, various scenes, some kind of small intimate stuff and some big stuff. And I taped all of it. And then, the, and then Richard passed out and uh, Ruth was delivering a line and her head sagged forward and she <laughs> sort of sat in the armchair and she started to snore and so she was asleep. So now I went downstairs, took my camera, packed it away, went downstairs and fell asleep in the lobby of the hotel and was woken up and asked to leave. So why you, you can't sleep in the lobby of the hotel? And the next day I got up, terrible, terrible hangover. I mean, the worst hangover I've had in a long time. And um, watched the tape and I was very nervous uh, then about showing it to Ruth because she's a very good looking girl, very attractive actress. And it was the most unattractive I've ever seen her. I mean, she it just looked really strange and really ugly and, and weird um, but it was very interesting and so I kind of weighed it up you know am I going to torpedo her performance the day before we mm. start shooting and uh, decided I should show it to her and spoke to her on the phone she agreed and she, she came over and watched it and we we learnt a lot from it because um, there's so many things you do when you're drunk and you, you generally don't observe yourself when you're drunk and you have a sort of slightly um, delusional perception of how you're behaving and you're not aware of a lot of the mannerisms and the, and the strange physical things that we did. So we noticed, for example, that she would comfort herself like a child and she'd stroke herself and almost like she was comforting a, a, a baby. Um, and so she, you know, that was something when it, during the film where I'd say, you don't seem quite drunk in this scene, you know, we need to try something else. And so we'd have that repertoire of little mm. things that we'd kind of cribbed from that tape. And then I, part of the deal was I said, I'll destroy the tape. You know, there's no way it'll end up as a DVD extra or anything like that. And we shot it on HDV and those tapes are really, really long. And so I started pulling it out in front of her and breaking it and pulling it out and breaking it. And then it literally was about 20 minutes. And I thought, I really wish I hadn't said this. I wish I'd, said I just, I wish I'd smashed it with a hammer or set, or set fire to it. You'd done something a bit more dramatic because yeah. this is just ages of pulling it out. Yeah. Kind of symbolic, I suppose. I mean, do, do you, it's on release in Ireland as we speak. I mean, yeah. Fright Fist is literally one of the few. This the is actual... the UK premiere. It is. Well, well the, no, the, the, the England premiere because sure. we screened up. Screened in, in, in Edinburgh. Yeah. I mean, but is it surprising to you that it's being viewed as an Irish picture? I know you shot it there and everything, but and there was Irish money in it. But did you ever see it as an Irish film? Well, I am Irish, and I don't seem, ah. and I don't seem like an Irishman. Uh, maybe apart from my eyebrows, but, but it's not. Oh, right, it's just right. Yeah. <laughs> 
but it's uh, yeah, I was born there. All my family are from there. I've travelled there. Lived in Dublin for many years, um, and lost my accent when I moved to England. But yeah, I always saw it as an Irish film. Right. And we went out of our way to shoot in Ireland and to cast as many Irish actors mm. as we could. And the one English actor who we have playing Irish, which is Richard mm. Coyle, has an Irish voice coach, has Irish parents. Uh, he worked very hard on the accent, you know, to try and get it within the boundaries mm. where Irish people wouldn't be bothered by it. Mm. So, yeah, I, I think it is an Irish film, really. I mean, a lot of the crew were Irish, and, you know. So you do say that? Well, I suppose it's a co-production. Really, right, right. But yeah, I think, I think uh, it's, it's, it's right that it should mm. open in Ireland and be kind of... They're promoting it there as an Irish film. You know? Right. I mean, it was a cold night when I, I turned up on the set. I mean, was it a difficult film to make from that point of view? Because yeah, it was freezing, mm. absolutely freezing. We we it doesn't the film doesn't really look like that. No, it doesn't. Uh, it kind of has the look of an Indian summer about it. But mm. if you pay very close attention, you'll see that there's frost on the grass and there's people's breath mist in certain scenes. You know, which works quite well. It helps with the atmosphere. But um, yeah, I mean, there's you know one some of the scenes towards the end where. Richard is in the quarry and he's lying on the ground. He, that's minus 15 degrees centigrade. Mm. And I had two or three Arctic layers of the latest and greatest you know, <laughs> heat retaining technology for traveling you know, to, the, to the Arctic and Antarctic. And, and uh, I was freezing cold. And at one point, the, a blizzard came in and rolled in and essentially snowed us off a, a mountainside. And I'm normally the last one who wants to give up. You know, I'm, Always pushing to keep going, and one of, you know, the, one of the more driven people like that. And I, mm. I was glad. I and mean, when that's when the snow came in, I just thought, I, I cannot for the life of me get warm. I'm just mm. suffering here really badly. From and we had a, a focus puller's assistant who wore Wellington boots. But somebody said it's very muddy. You want to wear something to keep your feet, keep the mud off your feet. And he got frostbite in both of his big toes, and uh, he, he will never have the feeling again in right. his big toes. So. It was cold. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, the film's a success. I mean, it's, it yeah. really works. You, you know, Thank it, you. it looks good. I mean, it's going to play really well to the Fright Fest crowd. I mean, there is this sort of like vague sort of joke about it that you need to go in having a few drinks. Or, yeah. What do you think? I think, it, yeah, I, I mean, I've watched it in all different states, you know, stone cold sober all the way through to blind drunk. And I would say it benefits from a, maybe a pint or two or the, or the equivalent before you go in. But it's actually, it's not really, you know, it's not like Hangover or something like that where it's like very broad, you know, bawdy kind of humour and, you know, so you don't want to watch it completely plastered. It's actually quite a, mm. well, you, I mean, you can comment, but it's actually kind of quite a lovingly crafted tribute to a sort of sure. slow burn monster movie. So it's, it's, it takes a little while for the, for the characters to get in their cups and sort of for the craziness to really sure. kick off. Who came up with the basic look of the monsters, by the way? Because they are... Very, very good, aren't they? Uh, it was a, collabor a collaboration between me and, and the visual effects supervisor and a, and a fantastic concept artist called Paul Catling, who's worked on a lot of big movies. Um, and, you know, just everybody, we, we, we'd all put different ideas forward and, we, you know, we worked out the ecology of the monsters. We, we know how they live on their home planet and where they are in the food chain and how they raise their children. And, you know, we worked all of that stuff out. We went to a really ridiculously mm. geeky level. So, for, for example... On their home planet, that we we have a sense of on Earth of horizon lines, so our eyes are like so, and you know we have a sense of balance. Whereas a grabber doesn't have that sense. A grabber is never upright, mm. so it can roll any number of degrees, and it's it's still upright. Everything works in, in circles mm. and spirals, so you know its its mouth rotates within its body, and it has its eyes go in a circle, and well, it's sensory organs. So they're not eyes. Mm. Being very specific. <laughs> Did you ever come up with an actual name apart from grabbers, which is what the Irish people get? Well, well the, the, the there's the king grabber, which is the male grabber, mm. the grabberella, which is the female grabber, and the uh, grabberlings, which are the babies. But in terms of you mean like a scientific Yeah, as a fan, did you come up with something like Latin and highfalutin or something? Or well, no, because no, it, it's, it's undiscovered a grabber, isn't it? Right. I don't know what they can you know, I, I, you know. I suppose Kevin Lehane, the writer, hasn't actually come up with something that's well, one of the probably, few. He probably has. <laughs> he's probably told me, you know, in, in a hotel room somewhere at three in the morning over a Guinness when he's slurring his words, and I, unfortunately I've forgotten. So, <laughs> but you can, yeah, you could ask. Well, listen, I mean, thanks. For, I mean, I'm glad we got the film. Always wanted it. Yeah, yeah. you try, and God bless you. You tried very hard. 
Yeah, no. I get it. They, they didn't want you to have it for some <laughs> reason. For some reason, we'll never understand Alan because we were all mad keen for Fryfest to have it. I know. So it's fantastic to. And it's, it's in the right slot, it's in the right place. I know it's yeah. going to work. So listen, thank you, John Wright.